Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Nate. I also go by Hockey Boy and Nate. In this video, we're going to be discussing how there is a tropical wave that's moving on through the Caribbean that could potentially become a hurricane, maybe even a strong hurricane, as it eyes areas along the Gulf Coast of the Gulf of Mexico. So if you guys are new to the channel, please be sure to leave a like on the video. Leaving a like on the video actually gets this video out to more and more people and onto their recommended feeds, essentially helping me get the information out. And I would greatly appreciate that, especially since this could be a very serious situation. As well, as subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications to stay up to date with the latest information that I possibly can help you out with. I am going to be doing a live tropical update tonight at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 5.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And I will be live streaming most likely for a couple of hours even after that. So if you have any questions, concerns, or want to take a look at the latest information then... Feel free to come out to the live stream at that instance. And feel free to share this information with friends and family and on social media like Facebook and Twitter. Same thing, trying to get the word out as quickly as possible. A couple areas to watch here in the Atlantic. We have Invest 97L, which is out in the middle of the Atlantic and is expected to stay over the Atlantic, mainly because you have this giant ridge here that's holding everything in place. You have this giant clockwise flow that's basically steering a lot of these storms from the uh, the main development region of the Atlantic, which is right off of the coast of Africa and the Cabo Verde Islands, and is basically curling it up and basically curling it back out to sea. So not exactly anticipating 97L to do too much. We have 98L, which is right here, and that is continuing to propagate further westward, maybe a potential tropical wave to watch out for down the line. Of course, as I mentioned, with that high pressure system steering everything further and further out to sea, we are anticipating this to continue to curl off towards the north and west, potentially moving north of the Lesser Antilles. However, where that goes after that, whether it curls off towards Bermuda or whether or not it goes up the east coast, that is still the question here, although we will not answer it here in this video. The main thing that we will be talking about, however, is Invest 99L, which is currently situated somewhere south of Jamaica and south of Cuba. And that has continuously been showing some good promise as to whether or not this will be able to develop later. If we take a look at the satellite imagery for this, of course, uh, this is uh, almost looking like a bona fide tropical system, except for the fact of a couple things. First off, on the southwestern side of the system, it's not exactly wrapping around a lot of these showers and thunderstorms. It's kind of being pushed along, and that's typically what tropical waves mostly do. Of course, you have some other areas of the tropical wave that has been pulling these showers and thunderstorms for the northward. You even have this general curling, this counterclockwise curling for the most part, uh, that begin to show with tropical waves, and maybe even uh, waves that are transitioning from tropical waves to tropical systems like depressions and storms, and maybe hurricanes along the line. But as of right now, that big concern as of right now is that there isn't really a whole lot of that closing off with those southwestern, uh, the southwestern side of the storm. It's not really closing off with those uh, northwesterlies, and uh, it's basically becoming more of a tropical wave in this instance so not exactly form as a uh, not exactly expected to form as of right now you also have two other factors that are uh, not associated with 99l we have a lot of dry air out in front of this system and you can tell because by looking at some of the showers and thunderstorms out in front of the system you can see how they originally start to form but then they wither out very quickly you can see a lot of these little feathers that appear here and they just basically just wither out as uh, time continues to progress. And that's a good indication of some dry air over there, as well as some of these little line segments here, indicating some outflow boundaries that are beginning to develop due to decaying thunderstorms. So uh, that dry air could potentially limit showers and thunderstorms, similar to what uh, you already can see over there next to the Yucatan Peninsula. And if that dry air seeps into the system, then it could potentially hamper this from forming a little earlier than anticipated. But still something to watch out for as to whether or not that could basically move off that dry air due to the fact that there is a lot of moisture around the system. And then you have a lot of wind shear here from this upper level trough that's, uh, that's situated somewhere north of Cuba and right near the southern portions of the Florida Peninsula. And it's basically creating this counterclockwise flow to where you have a lot of wind shear that's pushing 
these showers and thunderstorms off to the northern side of the actual system. So definitely something that we're going to have to watch out for as this continues to progress on forward as to how much that shear will be a impact uh, will impact this system as time moves along. Looking at the satellite ASCAT analysis here, looking at the surface winds from that pass there, and we can see exactly what we just saw on satellite imagery. We have a lot of winds that are coming out from the south and west, and we have a lot of winds that's coming out from the east as well as from the north and east here, indicating a general counterclockwise circulation here. However, we do not have these westerly winds that are basically pushing off on the southern end of this basic uh, general rotation, if you will. So that's the reason why it's not exactly the uh, not exactly designated as a tropical storm in this instance, because it doesn't have enough organization to be classified as such. It also has a very broad area of a center. You can see a lot of these uh, white lines into into even these little dots. And uh, that's another thing to tell you that this thing isn't exactly consolidated over one area. It's very broad in this instance. And so if it can consolidate to just one general area of spin, then that's when you can talk about a potential intensifying tropical system as time continues to progress. Here's the water vapor imagery, just basically zooming everything out here for the most part. You can see that upper level low over here creating your strong wind shear and pushing these showers and thunderstorms off from the center of the main part of convection. You can also see that you have a lot of showers and thunderstorms even off to the south of it. A lot of moisture here for the most part that is surrounded, uh, really surrounded this tropical system, providing it an abundance of energy that it could potentially uh, intensify further and further. The one thing that we do have to watch out for, as I mentioned, is this little pocket of dry air right here. You can see how it's not exactly gray and it's a bit more of a darker gray. And as I said, that indicates some dry air right within that system, uh, right next to the system actually. And how much will that limit showers and thunderstorms is the big question as it continues to propagate further towards the north and west. But uh, the big thing here is that the uh, one one of the factors we can forecast will most likely weaken, and that will be the wind shear. Typically with upper level lows, they tend to weaken as time continues to progress, especially within the tropics. So we can expect this wind shear to start to basically break, and we can anticipate this tropical system to bust through that wind shear and basically render that entire uh, upper level low or that upper level trough practically useless. So... I guess the big thing here in this instance is how impactful will this dry air be for the time being? Because once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, it will most likely become a hurricane. And as we take a look at the uh, multi-spaghetti model guidance here, it basically says that uh, just that for the most part. Uh, if you are looking at this for the first time and you're trying to figure out as to what exactly is this, uh, basically what this is is if you can imagine you're in a club and you have a bunch of club members giving your opinions. This is basically the GEFS club or the GFS club. And all these little lines are the club members giving their own opinions. And so uh, that's uh, basically the best way I can talk to, uh, best way I can uh, represent the track for this for the most part. Uh, and then on the right side gives you the intensity of the lowest pressure in millibars. And that can help determine as to whether or not things can become a hurricane, tropical storm, major hurricane. So uh, anywhere within the uh, blues, greens, and yellows, that's typically tropical storm status. Oranges are potential hurricane. Uh, reds are category one to category two, maybe even category three status. Uh, and then once you get into the hot pinks, pinks, and even lavenders, that's when you talk about category four and category five status right around that general vicinity. So... Uh, the big thing here is that most of the models have their opinions over here in the general area of Louisiana. We have a couple that move a bit further west of that into areas of Texas, but I do want to mention that if it does move further and further over towards Texas, it'll have a lot more time over this warm and unstable water and even air mass uh, with temperatures at the sea surface of about 29 to 31 degrees Celsius, which is well above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, typically anything above 29 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 29 degrees Celsius, I should say, right around that uh, temperature or above can favor rapid intensification. 
And in this case, most of the models do think that that will be the case as it gets closer and closer to land. So definitely something to watch out for as to where this will potentially head off as well as how strong it will be. And if it does rapidly intensify, how much will it do so within that time period? If you take a look at the intensity guidance here for the most part, you can see that this does have a very high ceiling. We have a couple models that think it'll reach category four status. And then we have a couple models that think it'll be a category one to a category two hurricane as well within that time period. So it's really something to watch out for as to how this continues to progress further on and how much will it intensify over time. Of course, you do have a couple outliers here with uh, some models do indicating that this could potentially stay as a tropical storm. However, as I mentioned, there really isn't a whole lot of uh, things out in front of this system to really hamper this, pro uh, this system's progress. Let's move on to the GFS model here, the uh, cyclonic vorticity for the most part. That's what's indicated in all of the shaded colors. So the more oranges and reds, the more of a chance you're, that's probably a tropical system. Uh, and seems how tropical systems create a lot of vorticity. That's kind of a good correlation in this instance. Of course, the wind barbs indicate the winds in knots at 500 millibars. So definitely something to uh, pay attention to with the direction of these wind barbs as well as how strong they actually are. Of course, here's the tropical system in question. And uh, another thing that I do want to pay attention to is this high pressure system that's located right next to Bermuda, typically associated as the Bermuda High, creating this, uh, this clockwise flow for the most part with very strong wind shear on the southern sides of the storm and upwards of about 20 to even 25 knots in some spots. As this continues to propagate further and further towards the north and west, the high pressure system actually moves closer and closer to the coast and it actually starts to enforcing its uh, to enforce this wind shear by the time it actually moves over the Gulf of Mexico right around Friday evening into Saturday morning. And so instead of this tropical system moving from the southeast to the north and west, it will now start to move towards more of a west northwesterly component and kind of curl a little bit further off into that general direction. And so definitely something to watch out for, especially with where this high pressure system is and where its placement is. So uh, if it's a little bit further south, we can expect the system to cut a little bit sharper towards the west and move a bit more of a westerly component. If the high pressure system is a little bit further towards the east, we can expect the system to make landfall somewhere near Mississippi, Alabama, and even the panhandle of Florida. And so it's just it really depends upon where that high pressure system is in regards to where this tropical cyclone forms. But as this continues to move on through, uh, this ends up intensifying as most models anticipate this to do so. And by sometime on Sunday morning, all the way through to Monday morning, maybe even into Tuesday, uh, that's when this uh, storm potentially makes landfall, according to the GFS, actually. Uh, sometime along Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening is when this is expected to make landfall here. But something to really watch out for is that most of the models do not share the same opinion in regards to when it makes landfall. As a matter of fact, if we take a look at the HWRF model and start here from the beginning, uh, a couple things have been noted here, a couple changes. Um, but the one thing here is that it does make uh, does get its act together as it moves over the Cayman Islands. You can see the Cayman Islands being right about here. You can also see uh, Cuba starting to come into view here. And there is the western side of, of uh, Cuba right there. But it gets its act together. It rapidly intensifies over water as this continues to propagate northwestward. And then it actually makes landfall a bit further to the west, mainly in the areas near Intracoastal City and Lafayette, maybe a little bit further west of that. But definitely a little bit, uh, it's actually definitely way further uh, way further west of Lake Charles. So definitely something to watch out for with that. And even the model run prior, we were talking about a potential landfall over here in Texas as well. So not everything is set in stone, more or less, as to where the track would be. But definitely something to watch out for. I mean, even with this track here, you can see on the model run prior, Look at how far to the west this actually takes this tropical system here compared to it moving over uh, over Cuba. It's not exactly set in stone as to where this tropical system is actually formed and where it will uh, go off to. 
but where it does form will be a huge contributor as to where it will make landfall because that is basically uh, giving you a good idea where to start from compared to somewhere over in this general area to where the models have to pick it. So definitely something to watch out for as this continues to move about. As I said, I will be updating you guys more and more as time continues to progress. But uh, as of right now, that's going to be the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like on the video. As I said, it helps me get this information out to more and more people. That would be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications to stay up to date with the latest information. I will have a tropical update tonight at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. 5 30 p.m central daylight time so if you have any questions concerns or if you want to look at the latest information including hurricane hunter data then feel free to come out around that time as well and then share this information with friends and family and on social media the more people we can get this information out to the better so that we can potentially help save some lives in this instance as i said thank you guys so much for watching and i will catch you guys later on tonight so stay safe and peace out everyone